So market is doing well today. 19400 uh, uh, is it, it is trading at right now. Uh, mid cap another market is doing very well. But there's also one area of the market which is doing very well, and that is alternatives, be it PMS, be it private equity. Several areas of the market are witnessing good interest by HNI and also by retail. So that is the end of the market which we are uh, watching on unlisted shares. All of that we have seen very hectic activity. We've got uh, Anshu Kapoor who is joining us from Novama to talk exactly that. Rising interest of HNI retail in alternatives, PE, PMS, etc. And you'd be surprised to know that a lot of interest is actually coming from areas which did not have this kind of exposure before towards financial asset, that is tier 2, tier 3. Anshu, afternoon, thank you very much for joining us. You know, we are seeing good flows from PMS and mutual funds from tier, tier, tier 2, tier 3 as well. But now we are seeing equally high interest in alternatives as well. Uh, what's driving this much more renewed awareness from investors regarding financial assets from tier 2, tier 3? Good afternoon, Ajay. Great to be with you. Yes, um, it's, it's an interesting development that all of us are taking note of. And uh, first, I must say that, listen, uh, the whole asset management industry is in a structural bull run. The industry per se, 10 years back, was only 7 lakh crores. Today, the industry is 46 lakh crores. So that's a 6x, more than a 6x jump in about 10 years. Of which there's a segment called alternatives. You know, products that were earlier not available to our investors in India. They could take the form of private equity, uh, real estate, REITs, invits, private credit and so on. So those products are seeing a lot of demand. I think there are two drivers. Number one driver itself is the humongous pool of savings now, Ajay, available to the markets today. So Indians save about $750 billion a year. That is 60 lakh crores every year. And a part of that savings obviously gets channelized into equity markets and other risky assets as we call them. But as wealth increases, demand for alternative avenues also increase. And customers are asking us the question that, listen, why can't we also access the next best unlisted companies of India? Why is it that only foreign capital should have access to that? Why can't we access commercial real estate, for example, or infrastructure assets, for example. So access itself is a big driver. Emerging or evolving awareness about these products and asset classes is a big driver. So demand is not the issue, it's the supply, Ajay. And I think as we see more and more innovation and regulatory framework evolving, a lot of these products will see traction amongst the client categories that you just mentioned. I'm happy to chat about uh, in more detail about this. What are the triggers? What is the what is increasing the attractiveness uh, about our markets and assets of all kinds here? Yeah. So the other other aspect I forgot to mention, Ajay, is that the industry or the market structure has evolved a lot over the last ten to fifteen years. All these private markets have become fairly large. Just to give you a data point, over the last ten years. For foreign capital invested in private equity is about $250 billion. And if I look at FPI investments in listed markets, about $185 billion. So you can see the size exists today in the market. It's just that Indian wealth uh, was obviously catching up. Wealth was growing. And to the regulatory framework, AIF is a fairly new construct in India. So that was catching up. Uh, all of that is now coming together and therefore this so-called boom in alternative asset management. Right. Uh, I want to understand the stage of, you know, the sector right now regarding the asset management space here in India. There were very few DMAT accounts till two, three years back. Then they quadrupled. And that specific tilt of Indian saver to Indian uh, becoming an investor now has started. Uh, what phase does it uh, you know, belong to right now, the asset management space? In the next two, three years, what's the outlook of asset management sector in your view? Great question. Thank you, Ajay, for asking this. Um, we are at still very early stage. The household penetration only is about 7 to 8% in mutual funds. Um, and it's, it's, uh, if I were to compare this with the U.S. market, the U.S. market got peak penetration in the year 2000. So it's not that, you know, we are very, very behind. 
is just that the nature of the evolution is just in the early phase. So I would say that this industry will continue to double every five years, Ajay. And that, therefore, it's one of the rare stories where you see a structural bull run in the industry. So a 46 trillion rupee industry should be 90 trillion in five years. Uh, the industry today generates a revenue, Ajay, of about 24, 25,000 crores, a profit after tax about 6,000 to 7,000 crores. So it should, by the order, double in the next five years. And that is the growth that you are going to see, hopefully. Anshu, what is the future looking like? Where is the investor uh, preference like? Is their risk appetite also going through a change? They are becoming more... Uh, they understand how risk now, how to manage risk, and also the superior kind of returns which can be expect, expected if we, you know, stomach volatility, stay in the right asset class and ride next three to five year plus. Yeah, I think first I would like to point out that the regulator has done a terrific job in India, Ajay. Uh, you know, gone are the days where every three, four years we would hear of this financial market scam, which would shake the confidence of the investors and then it'll again take four, five years for the confidence to return. So oh, over a period of time, SEBI and the other market regulators have done a terrific job in laying the groundwork and the uh, framework for supervision. And that has enabled you know, this conviction to come to some extent. Two is creation of wealth, which we spoke about. And three is the supply of products. Uh, you know, A lot of customers in India still do not have the right diversification. It's real estate, it's uh, precious metals, which is gold and then fixed income and equity. So it's a very standard portfolio construct overall. Um, and as supply comes in, like I said, customers will demand diversification, customers will demand access to new products and opportunities. And obviously awareness will be built as we go along. Uh, and I think it is the onus of the industry. I'm, I'm part of the industry. It's our onus to create the awareness as we go along. A market, uh, has always offered in India good multiples, um, good return profiles on, on the alternative side. It's just that our customers never had access. It was all, only the foreign capital that was accessing this opportunity. Now I'm very excited with the possibility that we are able to offer this to our customers as well in India. Hmm. Right. Okay, uh, one more, one last word uh, on the earnings quality of Indian corporates. Because be it listed company, unlisted, eventually the returns on any asset class actually mirror the kinds of earnings profile the company is likely to post over the next three to five year plus. You speak to companies across categories, across shapes and sizes. How's the health of corporate India looking in terms of earnings uh, visibility and uh, the kind of trends they are shaping? I guess uh, you hear from a lot of experts and you know it better than I do, Ajay. Uh, we believe we are in a good patch and it has not gotten so good. Uh, if I were to go back to 2005, 6, 7, maybe that was a period when we saw the earnings quality or the balance sheet quality to be so, so good. And there are multiple drivers at play. You know, earlier, if it were IT exports uh, and banking financial services, now it's consumption. CapEx has come back. Real estate has come back in a big way. So there are multiple drivers to the economy um, that are driving this earnings quality upgrade. So I'm very, very positive. All right, Anshu, thanks very much for your time. Great chatting as always. That was Anshu Kapoor of Novama. Let's uh, talk about some m and in the healthcare space. Yes, 